Yo, what is going on everybody? This is Beanie, I'm Gay, and welcome back to another player review episode. And I know this episode is a little bit late, but I wanted to do all of them together. And then by the time they released all the cards yesterday, it was already too late to put a video out. They had like some fucking server issues or some shit. I mean, who's really surprised by that? But uh, but anyways, um, I'm back. We're going to do this player review. We have like a ton of players to review today, like fucking 10, 11, something like that. Um, and they are fucking amazing guys they are just they they are so sick like th this is in my opinion this is the best content release that we've had so far um with the best like combined group of players um so uh with that said let's get into it we're gonna start out with the event rewards that i still have not reviewed yet so let's do that okay we're gonna start out with probably the least valuable event reward in my opinion and that is the 91 overall jordan Z. Zimmerman. This card just isn't very good. Um, he's kind of inflated by his stamina and his walk per nine and his control and all that. And I'm not really huge on attributes like that, but that doesn't mean that this card is like below average or anything. Um, I mean, his, his hit and K per nine, it's a combined 141. That's not very good like that's um right about average uh for for a diamond that's below average but like even for your baseline pitcher that's kind of average but his stuff isn't terrible he has decent velocity with decent break and he has a, you know a basic pitch selection um with a 12-6 replacing like a normal curveball so that's pretty interesting so i think because of that and because his k his hit and k per nine aren't just terrible I think that that makes him an above average pitcher, but just ever so slightly. I ended up putting his fag at a 5.3. Okay, and then moving on, we're going to talk about the Asdrubal Cabrera card, and this is a card that I think people might be underselling. I think that this card has some has some interesting value. He hits both sides of the play. He's a, first of all, he's a switch hitter, and that's always valuable. Second of all, he can play both uh, middle infield positions, so that has some value, and he can hit both sides of the plate fairly well. He does it a little bit differently, though. Against righties, he's going to have a little bit of pop, but you know he might strike out a little bit more he might not be able to make as much solid contact and then against lefties he's going to be a little bit more of a contact hitter um very interesting uh definitely not like an overpowered card or anything but if you're really good with your pci and you need like a nice little switch hitter on a budget style team i think this guy can get the job done for you i think he's very effective in that capacity and he plays you know an average defense kind of about like i don't know carlos correa type defense uh, he doesn't have a lot of speed for middle infield so you know that might be an issue for you but overall i think this card is an above average card that could get some utility for you and i put his fag at a 6.5 now we're getting into the guys that are really, really interesting. The 91 overall Jonathan Broxton card. And oh my goodness, this guy is nasty in every sense of the word. He is, uh, first of all, his hit and K per nine are, are elite of the elite. There are only a couple pitchers in the game that have 99-99 hit and K per nine for relievers. And, he, you know, he's not one of those guys, but he's just, I mean, he's basically one of those guys. 97-99 is almost perfect. He has 53 walk per nine. So I know there are a lot of people out there who are big into like control pitchers and stuff like that. I'm not really one of them. I'm pretty good with my interface. So I don't really care about that that much. Um, you know, it, I guess his overall is a little bit inflated by his home run per nine, but I don't really see how he's not a higher overall. I mean, I guess his walk per nine is really dragging him down a little bit because this card should play like one of the elite um, relievers in the game and because uh, I mean his stuff is amazing too 97 99 it kind of mirrors his uh, his hit in caper nine which is kind of interesting and then he, he's not you know a lot of these guys who have this amazing stuff in this in these amazing per nines they end up being two pitch pitchers or four seam slider four seam slider and then maybe a two seam this guy also has a change up to go along with it so that also adds to his value um, I, w whenever I put his, uh, his, his stuff into the formula, it churned out a fag of a 9.2. 
um, which is elite. I, I, it's one of the best fags that I've that I've given out so far since I've been doing this because I really, really believe in this guy. Um, the only thing that kept it from being higher was that he didn't have like a, if if that two seam were a sinker, he'd be even higher. But for now, we're gonna leave his fag at a nine point two. One of the best relievers in the game, in my opinion. And now we are getting into the guy who is one of my favorite cards they've released so far this year. I loved this card last year. And this this one is a little bit different than the one from last year, but it, it still kind of has the same overall kind of principle behind it. He is a left-handed outfielder with a lot of speed. He can hit righties with the best of them and is okay versus lefties. Um, that's kind of this card, this, this card's, uh, you know, that's the positive side to this card. And also he can cover a lot of ground in the outfield. The one negative with this card is that he kind of has a noodle for an arm. So if you have one of those beast teams and you're, but you know, you're kind of looking to replace maybe like me, you're looking to replace a guy like Lou Brock in left field. This guy would be perfect for that because arm strength really isn't that important out in left field. It, it, you know, it's way more important in center and in right field. And this guy, it, to me, he could be like, if you play him in left field, he could right now already be the best left fielder in the game. Um, maybe the, the, definitely the best left-handed left fielder, if that's where you choose to play him. And, you know, a lot of people may say, well, what about Ted, Teddy Ballgame? What about Ted Williams? I like that Ted Williams card, but there are a lot of things that this card does better. First of all, he has more speed. For, uh, second of all, he has much better defense. He's going to cover a lot more ground. Um, yeah, the Teddy is a better hitter, but against righties, like it, it's kind of more like 93, 89, 84 is right up there with the elite. And against lefties, you know, you don't face lefties as much. So, and, and, and this card is still effective. This is basically a Lou Brock with better defense that can hit lefties and has more power against righties. That's kind of how I see this card. Yeah, he has a little bit less speed, but. I like 92 77 that's enough to be dominant on the base pass I love this card I gave him a fag of a 9.3 that's amongst the highest that I've given out so far this year um and a lot of people may want me to bring that down because of his lack of an arm but I'm not big in arm strength anyway and I think if you put this guy in left field he is going that, that that's kind of mitigated and I think this is one of the best cards in the game right now not not the best but I, I would probably put him in the top 10 I really really love this card okay now let's move on to some of the ranked seasons rewards some of the pack um you know uh, rewards that you can get uh, with this new release and there are some really really excellent cards that they released uh, yesterday and oh my goodness guys like this 99 Ralph Kiner he is basically just a full out right-handed monster um, basically like one of the flashback Miguel Cabrera's, um, you're not going to play him anywhere other than left field. In my opinion, maybe if you want to put him at first base, I know he doesn't have that secondary, but he could probably do an okay job there. Um, but he is just a hitter that you are getting this card because he is a monster hitter. Now with the formula that I employ, the fag formula, the fact that he doesn't have speed and he doesn't have any defense to speak of that does drag his fag down a good bit. Um, and you know, it, it's kind of unfortunate because I do think that this guy has a, uh, has a lot of utility for a team. Um, and I think that his hitting, you know, his hitting is amazing, but, um, you know, hitting isn't the only thing I'm taking into consideration. And if I were choosing between this guy and the Jacoby Ellsbury to put in left field, I would go with the Ellsbury all day because, you know, you need that speed and you need that fielding if you want to have that overpowered team that, you know, everybody is kind of chasing and, maybe you want to play this guy at first base. Maybe that's an option for you. But for me, I would take the Ellsbury and stick him in left field. Um, but this card is still great. And I gave him a fag of an 8.3. Moving on, we've got the 99 overall Eric Gagne. I'm telling you guys, they, they, they just released amazing cards all week this week. Um, and this card is no different. He has perfect per nines, better than the Broxton's per nines. He also has control if you're looking for a guy that has control. That's why this card is a 99 and the Broxton isn't. Plus, he has good clutch and good home run per nine and all that jazz. Um, the one thing that this card doesn't have that the Broxton does have is um, his stuff isn't 
as overpowering as the Broxtons. Um, he does have great break, and his pitch selection is extremely good for a reliever. He just doesn't throw quite as hard, and that's okay. Like, this card is going to throw hard. Like, he's probably going to sit in the mid-90s for you, and that's, you know, with good off-speed stuff and good, uh, you know... Um, speed separation between your pitches like if he throws his change up or a splitter in like the low 80s and then he can run it up to 95 that's an effective pitcher and I think that this guy is going to be an incredible reliever for you and then and another bonus about this card is he is not that difficult to acquire all you have to do is make it to the championship series and I promise you guys I know a lot of you guys you know that watch me you think that that may be out of reach or something if you do, go back, watch some of my tutorial videos, see if that helps you any. I promise you it is not that difficult to get to the championship series. And if you put in the time and the effort, you'll be able to get there and grab this 99 overall Eric Gagne. He's definitely worth it. I think this guy could be in your bullpen for the long haul. And I put his fag at an 8.8. .8. Definitely below the Broxton, but really, really, really good card. Okay, now this card was kind of funky to grade, and it's a 92 overall Rod Carew. And the reason it's kind of funky is because I don't think anybody is going to buy this card to play him at first base. I think if you buy this card, you, you buy him to play him at second. And um, as a second baseman, I think that he has a lot more value, like an insane amount more value than he does at first base. But since his primary was at first base, I had to grade him accordingly. Although I did try to take into consideration that, um, you know, second base is probably where you're going to play him. And so, I, you know, I graded him as a first baseman, and the two formulas are distinctly different. Um, so, you know, it, it was just kind of tough to figure out what to do with him, but I decided to grade him as a first baseman, and it probably did lower his fag a little bit. As a hitter, you know, he's, he's very good. Um, he's not going to like ever strike out for you your pci is going to be huge and against right handers he has you know a little bit of pop he against righties he's kind of like lou brock you know high vision high contact you know and, and a little bit of power you know if you if you get a hold of a ball you can hit it out with him and then against lefties he's more of a contact slap hitter type guy with a little bit of power not a ton but a little bit um, and then the one thing that kind of disappointed me about this card was the fact that he didn't have great speed or stealing. Like, we've seen Lou Brock's in the past that have had really good speed. Um, his stealing has never been up there. I guess he wasn't a very high percentage guy in his career, but um, his stealing has never been that high. But it would have been nice if he had, like, 90-plus speed with, like, 55 stealing or something like that. That would make this card a lot more valuable at second base or even at first base. Um, but 77, you'll just kind of have to deal with that. And then his defense is not great. His defense is, that that's the one area where you would kind of wish that you had him at first base instead of second. So that definitely drug him down a little bit too. But overall, this card is well above average no matter where you decide to play him. Even though I would definitely recommend putting him at second if this is a card that you kind of want. So I ended up putting his fag at a 7.5. Um... It, it, it could be lower, it could be higher, depending on where you decide to play him. It's just, I don't know, it's a very, very odd card. It, it, it's very unique amongst cards in this game. Okay, and finally for the last ranked season's reward, we're going to talk about the 88 overall Sean Green. And, you know, it's, it's just not a very exciting card. It's a guy that is just... You know, he's a, he's a very good hitter versus righties and against lefties, not so much. Um, Hitting-wise, he kind of reminds me of the Jim Edmonds, good versus righties, not great against lefties. I'm talking about the Jim Edmonds from last year, he, even though he has a little bit of power versus lefties, and he's kind of a low-vision guy. Um, the one cool thing about him is he does have a little bit of speed, not a ton, but a little bit, and his defense is passable, but it's not great by any stretch. Um, definitely an interesting card, but not a guy that I get super excited about. And I'll put his fag at a 6.9. Moving on to one of the more exciting rewards that people seem to be really excited about. I like, I'm excited about this card too. It's very interesting. And that's the 99 overall Yadier Molina. Um, this is a card that people have really been waiting for. Uh, him along with the 99 Joe Maurer whenever they decide to come out with that. If they decide to come out with that. Um, this card is great. 
Um, you know, we're, we're very, very thin on catchers. And anytime you release a, a really great catcher, it's always going to kind of have more value than any other release just because it really is just such a shallow position. I mean, you remember the other day I was getting really excited about like this 95 Carlton Fist. that's not even like that good. The 94 Russell Martin, Mike Zanina, like I, I know the Gary Sanchez, like you get pumped about those cards because catcher is just so light. Um, but this card obviously has a, a ton going for it. It's um, a very, it's a, it's a phenomenal hitter against lefties and against righties. It's passable. 87 contact, 60 power, 93 vision. Very, very good. I'm um, not a guy that's going to hit a ton of home runs for you against righties, but against lefties, he totally can. 84 power is totally enough to hit a lot of home runs against lefties. Um, and then, obviously, his defense is just second to none. His defense is amazing for good reason. Yadier Molina has been one of the best defensive catchers that we've ever seen in the game. Um, he has great blocking if you if you're of the belief that blocking actually does anything. Great fielding, great reaction, but the arm strength is where this card just really just kind of outdoes everybody else. Nobody is going to be uh, stealing or running the bases super effectively on you. Um, that and, and that's always a plus. I've always thought that catcher defense is kind of overrated in this game, and it's not as important as people like to believe. But if you can get a guy that can hit as well as this one can and play phenomenal defense, that is insanely valuable. Um, you know, I just, it, it, my, my position on catcher defense is I'm not willing to sacrifice good offense to get that defense. Um, but if, if you can have both, oh man, that, that, that's where it's money. Um, and obviously on the speed front, we really don't care about that a ton, but he's not, you know, he's not a fast runner or anything like that. Even though there are worse runners at the catcher position, certainly, um, you know, this guy's a guy that's not going to have too many like doubles or triples or anything like that. Um, but he is a great hitter and a great defender and that is really valuable. So I put his fag at a 9.0. And then finally, we are going to talk about the least exciting 97 overall in the history of MLB The Show. That is the 97 overall Orlando Cepeda. And, you know, I don't want to shit on this card or anything because he is a phenomenal hitter. 81, 95, 97, 99 with 79 vision. I mean, what more could you really ask for out of a hitter? But he's kind of like the Ralph Kiner. He doesn't really play defense all that well. He doesn't have, like, a ton of speed to speak of. Um, he's just, he's a great hitter, and he's not as good of a hitter as the Ralph Kiner is. Um, you know, he play and he plays first base which is, uh, you know, extremely sat oversaturated position. Um, and, you know, he does have those two secondaries in the outfield, but with that defense, I feel like a lot of people are going to be pretty reluctant to plug this guy out there in the outfield. And I know a lot of people kind of hate his stance, too. He has kind of a closed stance, and it's kind of hard to turn on balls uh, whenever you use this card. Um, it, it's just not a super exciting card for a 97 overall. But, to, you know, to his credit, it, it's it's almost impossible to be an exciting first baseman. Like, they, they're literally going to have to release a guy who is 99 everything with, like, great defense and a little bit of speed for me to get excited about a first baseman. And he'd probably have to be a switch hitter, too. Um, I mean, it's just not, I, I, I never get excited about it, but this card is definitely above average. He, I, I mean, well above average. He's one of the best cards that they've released in this last, you know, thing. And I think that if you decided to put this guy in your outfielder at first base, he's going to be very valuable for you. So I ended up putting his fag at an 8.2. And I think that that's fair because he is a phenomenal hitter. Anyways, guys, that is going to do it. I'm gay. <laughs> I keep I, uh, I keep saying I'm gay just uh, like subliminally. So eventually that'll become like a meme or something. Um, but no, nah, guys, uh, that that's going to do it for this episode. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thank you for coming by every day to support my content. I really, really appreciate it. I will see you guys later on. Please like and subscribe and, uh, you know, share it with a friend. If you have a friend, I don't have many. So, yeah, if you have one, share them. Tell them that there's this really weird guy who makes MLB The Show content. But anyways, guys, I will see y'all later. Peace. Mm -hmm.